Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our final webinar of 2021. It's how to maximize the lifespan of a timber bridge. My name is Julie Ledbetter. I am the sales and marketing coordinator at York Bridge Concepts. We're a full service design build firm specializing in vehicular and pedestrian bridges. We focus on longevity, style, and craftsmanship. We have thousands of bridges that can be seen in almost all 50 states, as well as the Caribbean islands, Central America, and Europe. Uh, we'd really like to uh, build one in South Dakota. So if you are in our audience and you are from South Dakota, please give us a call. We create innovative crossing solutions for any environment. Timber bridges are a passion and we're very good at it. So before we get started, I wanna point out the Zoom features that we'll be utilizing throughout the webinar to enhance your interactive experience. We will be posting links to articles, projects, and upcoming webinars in the chat. Actually, upcoming webinars will be for next year. We haven't planned those out yet, but we do have recorded webinars um, that Seattle will be posting in the chat a little bit later. There's also a poll question that we'd like to get your feedback on. We will share the results, just a few minutes, and you may type a question in the Q&A that we'll answer at the end of the presentation. If you would like to participate in discussion at the end of the webinar, you're welcome to raise your hand and I'll unmute your mic so you can participate. That will be at the very end of the webinar. Don't worry, there's no video. So I have with me today again for a three-peat, Titus Edwards, lead singer, senior bridge consultant at York Bridge Concept. Uh, he's been here for a few days, haven't you? <laughs> Hi, Julie. Yes, I have. Good to be with you again. Yeah, 20-year 20, 20 uh, Timber Bridge expert and veteran at York Bridge Concepts. Uh, he's partnered with over, uh, just hundreds of projects <laughs> <laughs> over that amount of time. So uh, always, always a pleasure to have you here today, Titus. Thank you, Julie. Yeah, if you could pop up the poll um, results. Uh, you guys are pretty smart. I, I don't, I, you know. I, we tried to trick you on this one. I don't think we can trick you guys. I see that uh, we have some uh, pretty good answers here. Uh, I'm not going to give you the answer quite yet, but I do like what I see here. So I'm going to go ahead and let Titus tell you the answer. <laughs> well, today, Julie, we're going to be talking about how to maximize the lifespan of a timber bridge. And this is a very interesting webinar. Julia, I've been here for 20 years. And in that 20 year period, I have talked to thousands of clients about thousands of projects all over the country that involved a timber bridge. Julie, can you guess what question I am asked most often? Well, uh, since the title of our webinar is how to maximize the lifespan of a timber bridge, I'm guessing people actually want to know how long is the lifespan of a timber bridge and how do I get it to, to, to get that far? Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> actually, the most off question is exactly that. How long will a timber bridge last? And the second question relates to that. They always want to know what do you have to do to maintain a timber bridge? bridge. Well, today we're going to be addressing the lifespan of a timber bridge and how we here at York Bridge maximize the lifespan of a timber bridge. Well, let's just go ahead and get into it, Julie. How long will a timber bridge last? How long, Titus? 75 years. So if you guessed in the poll question that 75 years or more, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and Julie, I think this is going to come to a shock to a lot of people. Uh, our bridges here, our vehicular timber bridges carry a 75 year design life. And I think this is going to shock a lot of people because of the misconception yeah, that is absolutely. out there about timber bridges. Yeah, people, there are a lot of them. <laughs> people feel like, oh, a timber bridge, it's not going to last very long. And a timber bridge, oh, it's going to be a maintenance nightmare. Now, Julie, those are not true, are they? They are not true. And that's why we are discussing three main points today to, uh, to let our audience know um, just exactly what we do to get that 75-year design life out of a timber bridge. Well, you're exactly right. These are misconceptions. And I think part of the misconception has come from the fact 
that almost anybody can hammer a nail and cut a board. So you've had thousands of companies across the country that have said, oh yeah, I can build a timber bridge. And they've tried. Well, at York Bridge, we're a professional timber bridge company. And what we do is done at a much higher standard as we're gonna be talking about today. And you can see here, basically the three aspects that we're gonna be considering today. The design and materials, the protective systems, as well as inspection and maintenance of timber bridges. But Julie, before I go any further, I wanna talk a little bit about timber itself. Timber itself is a great material to build a bridge out of. It is a very durable material. And we build our bridges with timber piling foundations and using pressure treated lumber. Um, I'm getting ready to fly to Indiana to see my parents. I grew up in Indiana, as you know, Julie. Just west of Indianapolis, they just completed what they have every year, the Park County Covered Timber Bridge Festival. They have 31 covered timber bridges, and most of these were built in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. These timber bridges will last, and that's what we're going to be dealing with in our presentation today. Well, Titus, what kind of materials do we build with? I see here on the map um, a little bit of variation here. Well, our standard building material is Southern yellow pine, and we use that in the east and, and southeast and most of the Midwest. And then as we fur go further out to the west, we utilize Douglas fir. Douglas fir is more native to that part of the country and stands up well in the dry, arid parts of the United States. Yeah, and it looks like there's some there's a little bit of uh, um, difference right in that middle section when you go up from Texas all the way up through uh, Wisconsin on the east coast of Texas, you, we do see a lot more of our southern yellow pine being utilized. However, if we do build out west Texas, uh, we probably would ut utilize Douglas fir. Uh, we do have a couple of Douglas fir applications in Missouri and um, southern yellow pine uh, can be used also in Illinois. So um, in that area of the United States, we kind of look at the look at the region a little more closely to see which material we're going to choose. Indeed, we typically are looking at the humidity levels in those areas as well as the rainfall to determine the right type of lumber. And southern yellow pine and dug fir are very standard in the construction industry in these parts of the country. So uh, this is a very uh, I, I, I just really love this bridge, even without its coatings and without the post caps. This is Sunset Beach in Hutchison Island, Florida. And this is just after construction, before we put the coatings on, before we put the post caps. And even in its uh, natural state, Southern Yellow Pine is just a, it, it has a beautiful wood grain. It's a great material to build with. Indeed, this is a beautiful two-lane vehicular bridge with a pedestrian section all built out of sawn dimensional lumber, southern yellow pine, pressure-treated lumber, and this is crossing over a wetland in southeast Florida. Beautiful bridge made out of southern yellow pine. And yeah, so what are we looking at here, Titus? Uh, what do you have to do to treat it? Well, all the lumber that we use, Julie, is pressure treated lumber. You know, if you take a piece of lumber and you put it outside, it's not going to last very long, maybe four or five years at the most. And so they take the lumber and they pressure treat it. Now, what is that? Basically, that means that they are putting chemicals into the wood, preservatives into the wood to make it last outdoors. The pressure treatment, as you can see here, they're putting the wood into these vacuum tubes and putting the preservatives in. And there's all different kinds of preservatives that we utilize in different type of retention levels. And the preservatives are basically uh, a pesticide and a fumicide. You're trying to keep the bugs from eating the wood and you're trying to keep the wood from rotting and decaying over time outdoors. So you mean I can't just go to Home Depot and pick up this wood, Titus? <laughs> well, the wood that we use is all special order. And while they may have some 
pressure treated lumber there. Most of the wood that they utilize in places like that are not pressure treated. Uh, by the way, Julie, talking about pressure treatment, have you ever heard of the stakes test? Uh, tell me about the stakes test, Titus. Well, it has nothing to do with comparing sirloin, filet well, mignon, I was getting hungry. and ribeye. <laughs> <laughs> Back in 1937, the U.S. Forest Service in Mississippi took wooden stakes, two by four stakes. They pressure treated different type of pressure treatments, different retention levels, some of them untreated, and they stuck them into the ground. And they've been monitoring those pieces of wood, those stakes ever since. And what they have indicated, they'll pull them up every so often and inspect them, is that pressure treated lumber will last for a long, long time outdoors. And this is the kind of wood that we normally use lives. It is pressure treated lumber, Southern yellow pine or Douglas fir. And speaking of Douglas fir, here's a great application out in Lake Tahoe, California. It's the sawmill residents of using Douglas fir. Um, it, it looks a little bit different. You can obviously see a noticeable difference with the incising. What does that mean, Titus? Well, Douglas fir does not accept pressure treatment as easily as Southern yellow pine does. Southern yellow pine, the pressure treatment will penetrate 90, 95% throughout the entire board. Douglas fir <laughs> will not quite do that. And so what they do is they incise the wood. And here's a good, good example, good illustration there, Julie, where they are punching these indentations into the wood, then they pressure treat it. And this helps to, for the wood to be able to receive that pressure treatment. And I just, uh, just to point out, uh, the aesthetics of Douglas fir in the glue lambs. Um, it really makes for a beautiful uh, substructure on a bridge. Oh, it does. The, the bridge is beautiful. It's all um, uh, Douglas fir. This is in South Lake Tahoe, California, where it's dry and arid. What a beautiful, beautiful bridge. And these beams all out of Doug fir work very, very well. So uh, we, we talked about the structure of a bridge, uh, Douglas fir, southern yellow pine, great materials to work with. Our specifications are very particular and uh, the, with the treatment and the coatings, they last a very long time. However, when you are talking about a vehicular wear deck, you're going to need something that's very dense and very hard. And what we recommend uh, for an upgraded deck is Epe hardwood. Now you can get a standard Southern yellow pine or Douglas fir deck. It will be um, it will be a quality deck and will still have a nice long lifespan on it. But your wear deck is meant to do just that: wear out. Well, yes, indeed, and and I think it's good here to point out, Julie, what we're talking about here. When we build a timber vehicular bridge on a roadway. There are two deck systems involved. Underneath, there is a structural subdeck. Then over the top, we put a second deck. This is a wearing deck, a wearing surface. And that's what we're talking about. A wear deck, Julie, or the deck of a timber bridge is especially important because it has to take not only the elements, but it's also dealing with the vehicles traveling over the bridge. And so we've put a wearing course that can easily be changed out over time as it wears without really affecting the substructure of the bridge itself. And one of the things that we do here at York Bridge is to maximize the life of our timber vehicular bridges is that we recommend an e-pay wear deck instead of the southern yellow pine. Epe is a very dense wood and as you can see in this inset it has grooves so that it's a non-skid surface in case it gets wet and it works very very well and being a dense wood it's going to last much longer than southern yellow pine wear deck wood. Yeah and it's something interesting I just discovered 30 minutes ago is that there is a difference between hardness and density um, so it's very very dense uh, which prevents the moisture from coming in and damaging the deck 
And it's also very, very hard, which is uh, the force, the resistance of the force on top of it. So you actually need those two things in high, high amounts uh, to have a, 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 long, a long lasting uh, vehicular wear deck. And ePay has both of those things that's chemical free. Um, it doesn't require protections like pressure treatment, sealing, coating. Um, it, it's 100% recyclable, reusable, and biodegradable. Um, and it, it's, uh, it, it, it actually ages really beautifully. You can see that this is a, a brand new application of it. So it still has it, the tan color, um, a reddish tan color, and it will actually silver out really beautifully with very minimal um, ch uh, changes in its properties. Like it, it, it will not experience hardly any cupping or warping of any kind. Epe is a great material to use in a situation where you have these vehicles traveling over the bridge. So it makes for a great wear deck surface. And this is one of the ways that your bridge has innovated and come up with a good solution for our wearing surfaces on vehicular bridges. And just to illustrate hardness, obviously we have our standard building materials that are highly workable and, um, and uh, very standard in timber bridge building. And they work great for us. But like I said, for our vehicular wear deck uh, on the Jenka hardness scale, you can Google Jenka hardness scale. Um, it's the resistance to uh, denting and wear. And as you can see, ePay uh, far exceeds that um, uh, appropriate for a vehicular wear deck, not so much for building a bridge, has a very low workability level, but great for uh, a wear deck. Yes, you, you can see just how denser the EPE is. And when you have a situation where you do have traffic on a bridge, or as we'll talk about in a moment, pedestrians on decking, it makes for great material to utilize. Yeah, and pictured here uh, in our pedestrian deck and handrails, you'll notice um, that beautiful silver color that we just talked about is present here. It has aged very, very well. And we also use it in handrails as well. Um, and here's an actual up close of the wood in its silvered state. As you can see, no warping, no cupping. Um, it still looks as beautiful as the day you put it on, except the color changes a little bit. This is our Lakeshore Foundation boardwalk that we built in Birmingham, Alabama. A beautiful, beautiful boardwalk. And you can see that we utilize the EPE decking as well as in the handrail materials. And normally you try to match that. Decking is one of the important issues of a timber bridge. It's normally one of the very first things that may need to be replaced. And so by upgrading to the EPE, it's going to last much longer. And of course, you can see the beautiful look. Same thing is true in the handrails, in the railings, and therefore we've utilized EPE there as well. Beautiful bridge, Julie. Yes, so EPE, great, great, hard, hard material, dense material. Um, with pedestrian deck and handrails, you can also uh, get a composite material. Um, the, uh, the, the composite we use is, is the very high commercial grade um, material. Yes, many times instead of Ipe, we will recommend the composite decking as Julie is talking about. And we use a very high grade composite made by a company called Wear Deck. It carries a limited lifetime warranty. It's beautiful material, it's structural, it lasts, and requires very, very little maintenance as well. Later on, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about maintenance, but this is one way that you can expand or maximize the life of your timber bridge by upgrading to composite decking, as well as using some composite in the handrails as well. Yeah, this is Carrollwood Village Park, Titus. Do you know anything about this bridge? Well, just a little bit. <laughs> this is right here in our back door in Tampa. Uh, we were honored to work on this project uh, about, what is it, 800 feet long, winds over the pond. Beautiful, beautiful bridge in this brand new park. And uh, Hillsborough County loves their tim York Timber Bridge. And a couple of things about composite. Um, it's this, this particular composite, it's suitable for high pedestrian load ratings. Uh, so if you have a very high traffic pedestrian area with lots of bikes and vehicles, uh, smaller pedestrian vehicles, this would be uh, perfect 
for that. Also, heat reflective uh, technology. If you're uh, if you're decking out a bridge to a pool area, and you know a lot of people will be walking through barefoot, uh, that is something to consider. Uh, very low maintenance. The technology just keeps getting better and better on this one. If we want to get a 75 year lifespan out of a timber bridge, well, we want to try to maximize that lifespan of the deck as well. And um, lots of variety of color options, slip resistant, weatherproof, waterproof. I could keep going on and on about this one, Titus. <laughs> well, yes, indeed. It is, it is a beautiful bridge. You know, Composites got a bad name early on, but they've been around nearly 30, 35 years now. And over the last seven or eight years, they've improved them dramatically. And they do work very, very well. And when you have a high traffic situation, such as the decking, it makes for a perfect upgrade to a bridge. If you want to maximize the lifespan of that bridge and reduce the maintenance. So here's something else we want to consider with design and materials. We're getting into a little more, bit more of the design uh, on the left. My goodness, what is going on in that picture, Titus? Uh, well, something not very good. <laughs> not at all. It, it looks like we're looking at here a guardrail post of a timber vehicular bridge. And obviously there was nothing put on the top of that post and over time it appears moisture and the UV rays have affected the wood and it's starting to decay. It wasn't that, that was pressure treated wood though, is that correct? That's correct. But when you take pressure treated lumber and you're cutting it, drilling holes into it in the field, it's imperative that you reseal those cuts and holes with copper and aphthenate spray. And that's what we do. It's one of the standards here at York Bridge for all of our bridges because you're exposing the interior of that wood to possible degradation over time as moisture gets into the cracks and checks. And so we avoid that here at York Bridge by number one, putting that copper and over these cuts and holes. And then secondly, by what you see on the right, Post caps. Da -da. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You see a lot of different kinds of post caps that we utilize. Again, just another way we here at York Bridge maximize the lifespan of our bridges. Yep. And as you're watching and you're following through, we're going to show you some more bridge examples. Now you know what to look for as you as you look at our bridge examples. Take a look at the post caps on each picture. It'll pop right out at you uh, now that we've made you aware of it. You know, Julie, we're talking about the design and materials, the design and materials of a timber bridge. And that's so important because you've got to have the right design. Otherwise, a bridge is not going to last. And you've got to use the right materials or a bridge is not going to last. And here at York Bridge, we innovate. We're constantly looking at ways to improve and make our bridges better, trying to push that envelope to make them last longer. So yeah, so speaking of design, here's, here is something that uh, you will never see because it will be below the water, but it's a piling wrap and it goes around a uh, coated piling that goes into the water. Why would you do that, Titus? You know, when you build a bridge, Julie, in a saltwater environment, you have other issues at play. And, and York Bridge, since we have designed and built over 8,000 bridges all over the country, we've come across all different types of environments to build our bridges in. Oftentimes, a bridge is built in a salt water environment. In salt water, Julie, there's something in that salt water that you have to watch out for. Do you know what that is? Little, little organisms that like to bore into the wood. I thought you were going to say sharks, but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> These smarter than that, Titus. <laughs> tend to eat the wood. They're very, very aggressive. That's why if you see a wooden pier out into the ocean, most of those timber piling have started to hourglass as at the water line, these marine boars are eating into the wood. So we protect the piling that support our bridge, and we'll show you more about that in a moment. But then we also add another layer of protection with these vinyl wraps. And the vinyl wraps are put on at the waterline to keep these marine boars from eating into the timber piling. Uh, another design element that we uh, utilize with building our bridges, um, we dual coat our galvanized steel hardware and 
The thing is, is you could have superior wood, superior coatings, superior design, but uh, what holds the bridge together, Titus? Well, you've got to have the hardware. So you've got some metal in there as well as these uh, are being bolted together. And this dual coating is very interesting. And I don't know of other timber companies that do anything like this. We start with a superior material. We're using hot dip galvanized hardware and stainless steel screws. So we're already starting with superior material. But Julie, we're going a step further. In the field, when we're building the bridge, we are adding another layer of protection to the hardware. If it's underneath the bridge, it's another layer of galvanization or rush proofing. If it's on top of the bridge, a layer of paint. And this dual coating of the hardware will extend the life of the hardware by two times at least. Oh, let me back up. Here we go. Connections. Looks like they're putting silicon down into the holes where they have uh, countersunk the screws. And what is the purpose of doing that, Titus? Well, what you're seeing there on the left, Julie, you're seeing the sub deck being installed and we countersink the lag bolts, which means you've drilled a hole. The hole has been created. On the right, you're seeing the, po the uh, timber piling and then on top of that is the timber cap. To connect the two, we drilled a hole and drove a pin down into the piling. But because there's holes there, we wanna keep the moisture out, Julie. And so we're putting silicone in these holes to be able to keep the moisture out and keep degradation from happening over time. Yeah, and so I think what we can take away from design, uh, design and material specifically, is that it, it has to be treated. And anytime you're cutting into it, um, you need to consider those areas that you've cut into and protect those as well. Yes, indeed, makes a big difference. It's, it, there's so many, Julie, we could go on for hours and hours. There are hundreds of things that York Bridge does that are special and unique to make our bridges last longer in the design, as well as in the materials and the way we build these bridges. But we don't stop there, do we, Titus? Not at all. Nope, because we add, as soon as we're done building that bridge, we add our timber protective systems to it. And what is the purpose of adding that extra protection, even though we've had treated wood and we've coated everything, uh, coated the, uh, the, the hardware and put the post caps on, what's, why do we need to put on the protective uh, York Timber Protective Systems? You know, Julie, the greatest danger to timber outdoors are UV rays, the sun. And then of course, you've got all of the elements, the rain, the snow. So you wanna protect your bridge from these elements. Now it's pressure treated lumber, so therefore it's made to last outdoors, yes. But if you wanna push the envelope, if you want it to last longer, then we recommend putting protection onto the exposed wood to protect against the UV rays. Yeah, as you can see in this picture, is this is Esplanade by C.S. De Key. This is down in Sarasota, Florida. It's a Taylor Morrison development. Uh, the the piling, the 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 caps, the abutments, the railing, everything that's exposed is acrylic coated. Yes, this is part of the protection that we do. You can even see it on the backside of the timber abutment in the foreground. And this is just another way of protecting those piling and the side of the bridge to make the bridge last longer. Julie, while we're talking about piling, I saw something the other day that I think our audience might find interesting. The Federal Highway Administration was commenting on the lifespan of timber piles compared to steel and concrete piles. And they said steel and concrete piling will last around 100 years. This is that has been put into the ground, submerged in water to support a structure. When they were asked about timber piling, the Federal Highway Administration said, timber piling will last indefinitely. Wow. <laughs> I, 
I think that's a shock to most people. They don't think of that. They think, well, steel and concrete, those are going to last much, much longer. And the Federal Highway Administration, they, they, they don't even promote timber bridges. So they're not, they don't have a dog in this fight. They're not trying to promote timber piling. But it just goes to show that timber is a great material to build with. And what we're doing here at York Bridge, we're going beyond. We're maximizing the life of that bridge by putting this additional acrylic protection onto the piling. And if you want to look at aesthetics and uh, you want to choose something different for your guardrail, uh, we do have translucent oil coatings. Um, and if you'll notice in here, uh, this beautiful, I think this is the mahogany that we have on the rails. This is Richmond Cove um, in South Carolina, I believe. Mm -hmm. Charleston, South Carolina. This is part of the Dunes West large master plan community in Mount Pleasant. Uh, Richmond Cove, we work with Pulte Homes to build this two lane vehicular bridge, and it has all of our protection on the exposed wood. And, and what Julie is pointing out, this is your vehicular guardrail, and this has a translucent oil sealant that's been put onto the wood. In this case, it gives a little bit different look, a little bit more rustic look, but you can see the natural wood grain through the oil sealant. So sometimes we use acrylics that brings in all different kinds of colors. In this case, we're using an oil that has been tinted. You're doing the same thing though. You're protecting from the UV rays. Yeah, and notice those post caps, Titus. There they are again, very important. But a very neat design, something a little different than what you saw in the previous slides as far as post caps. Um, just a testament back to the custom design, the aesthetics that we can provide for your timber bridge. Yes, indeed. Beautiful, beautiful bridge. Yep. And just to point out, uh, when we do a structure, this is a uh, covered bridge, covered pedestrian walkway um, in Douglas Gates. That is Acton, Massachusetts. With the covering, you can see that the acrylic coating extends to that covered area on the, it's also in the inside and on the outside of that structure. You can also see that beautiful composite decking as well as composite railing, really great 75 year life des uh, design life on this bridge. Beautiful walkway, pedestrian walkway for this new school that's being built about 900 foot long boardwalk. What a, what a gorgeous design from an aesthetic standpoint, but with all of the acrylic protection on the wood, the composite and the decking and handrail, this thing is going to last for many, many, many years. So York Timber Protective Systems, we talked about why they're important and why we should add them for, to maximize the lifespan of the timber bridge. Um, sure, we can build you a, a bridge without the coatings. You'll still have a great design life on it. Um, and of course, Southern Yellow Pine, Douglas Fir, still beautiful wood uh, without the coatings. But this is covered bridge trails in Lewis, Delaware, just after um, construction, no post caps yet, no coatings. And then, Ta da! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a difference from an aesthetic standpoint as well. But remember, the main purpose of these finishes was to protect, to provide a another layer of protection for the exposed wood. That's how you maximize the lifespan of a timber bridge. And it goes really into the next point we're going to be getting into in a minute, how do you actually maintain a timber bridge. But what a beautiful, beautiful bridge with all of these translucent oil sealants that have been applied. Yep, this is Walsh Development. This is uh, right outside of Fort Worth, Texas. As you can see, just this was just at construction. Obviously, that composite deck's a little dirty, <laughs> uh, but we uh, cleaned it up and we added our York Timber Protective Systems, and you can see it fits very nicely into the aesthetics of the uh, the amenities in the background. Um, yeah. Be beautiful acrylic on the uh, handrail, the composite decking. Well, again, another gorgeous bridge, well-designed, right materials, properly protected. And our last example of uh, just showing off the aesthetics of what York Timber Protective Systems can do for you. 
And this is Emory Flats. It's a, a, it's a luxury apartments in Woburn, Massachusetts. It's right outside of Boston. And this is right at construction. This actually has the inside rails and the deck are all composite. Uh, but then the, su the, the substructure and the railing on the outside. Oh, goodness. Let me get back to my slide. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love how the, the colors chosen match the aesthetics of the apartment complex. And this beautiful picture that was taken in the fall with the leaves turning, what a gorgeous looking bridge in this particular setting. But as Julius pointed out, it's got the composite decking, composite in the rails, it's got the protection, you see it on the piling, the exposed parts of the bridge. This is how you design and build a timber bridge to maximize its lifespan. Yeah, and as we're talking about aesthetics, just know that a couple of weeks ago, Titus and I did a webinar called Legacy Timber Bridge Design. Um, this fits right into it. Uh, notice that, that color palette. We worked with the architectural theme. We worked with the architects and the landscape architects um, and the, uh, the developers of the property to make sure we had an aesthetically pleasing color palette and really worked that into the design. Yes, indeed. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so now we have a superior design and materials. We talked about that. We talked about the added protection with York Tever Protective Systems. So now we have this brand new uh, state of the art York Timber Bridge, and we hand over the keys to the owner. Then what, Titus? <laughs> well, this is the third point that we want to talk about in conclusion, and that is inspections and maintenance of a timber bridge. We've talked about, you gotta have the right design, the right materials. Secondly, we've talked about some of the protections that should be put onto the exposed wood. Now, third, we wanna talk about maintaining a timber bridge. What do you do to maintain this timber bridge so that it does last 75 years? Now, Julie, when you're talking maintenance, let, let, let's be clear from the beginning, all bridges have maintenance. Oh, you mean like kind of like my car? When, <laughs> yeah. You know, when I was 16, uh, I, I bought a car. It was not new. It was a used car, but I was very proud I bought it. And, uh, and I did not know you had to change the oil in it. You know, if you didn't change the oil in that new car of yours, Josh is going to be very upset with you. Very upset. Yes. Yes. You know, you're exactly right. You buy a new car. Most people understand you got to maintain it. You've got to take care of it, get the oil changed and other things as it ages. Bridges and if you're smart, no Titus, different. if you're smart, <laughs> Titus, you actually will set up a budget and put a, a time schedule out of when those things would happen, which we highly recommend. A, a, very good. Exactly right. And most people do that with their vehicles because they understand the importance if they want that vehicle to be able to last for a long time and be serviceable. A bridge is not any different. And I want to say this too, Julie, this doesn't matter whether you're talking about timber or steel bridges or concrete bridges, all bridges have maintenance requirements. And, and while we're talking about that, even the road leading up to the bridge has uh, required and had maintenance that needs to be scheduled and budgeted, correct? Well, you think about an asphalt road, it'll the top wearing surface will last about eight to 10 years, then they cut it off and they resurface it. Now they don't build the, have to rebuild the whole road, but they have to redo that top part of the asphalt. And the same thing is true of a bridge. Every so many years, there's going to be maintenance required. It doesn't matter what kind it is. And I will say this too, Julie, from a cost perspective, over time, over the 75 year life of a bridge, the costs are going to be about the same, whether it's timber, steel, or concrete. But you know the good thing, Julie, with a timber the, bridge, the maintenance is very simple and easy to do. Yes, yeah, speaking of simple, regular inspections, that is true for any bridge. Is that right, Titus? Well, that's correct. You always need to inspect a bridge. DOTs across the country normally have their bridges all inspected every two years. Uh, our bridges are in a little different situation. Uh, in private situation, we normally recommend about every four years or so a bridge should be inspected. So it starts with regular inspections to make sure you know what's going on with a bridge over time. Yes, and you can always call us for that. We do, uh, we do uh, in inspections on our timber bridges. 
Correct. We not only provide for inspections, we will also do maintenance and refurbishment on our bridges as well. So you got to clean a bridge, Titus. Um, well, you can't just leave it dirty all the time. Well, it helps. Like everything else in life, if you leave it dirty, it's not going to last very long. So all bridges need to be cleaned off from time to time. Uh, Julie, I had a client up in uh, Connecticut, built a mall and had a hundred foot long two lane steel vehicular bridge that they built. It only lasted 12 years 12 and it started years. rusting wow. out. Why did that happen, Titus? Well, think about it. Up in the north, they're using sand and salt because of the ice on the deck in the winter, and they did not clean it off each year, and it rusted out the structure of the bridge. They had to replace it in 12 years. So any bridge, always you want to keep it clean. Yeah, you don't want to leave uh, moisture, uh, standing water, mud, um, those different things scratch up your wear deck and, and also um, can contribute to rot on your wear deck. Yeah, very simple, basically just power washing, clean it up. So yeah, you have to uh, tighten your connections. Uh, obviously, with a lot of wear and tear, the, the, the wood's going to change a little bit over time. It's going to age. But also, um, but also with vehicular traffic and a lot of vibration, uh, you may have to go back in. It, that, that, it will be looked at during your regular inspections. You may have to go in and tighten the connections. Yes, you want to make sure you keep all of the bolts and the fasteners tied on a timber bridge. And normally after a few months, the wood is stabilized. And when it's tightened at that point, that nor they do normally stay tight. But your regular inspections will be able to tell if those bolts have loosened up and need to, to be tightened up again. And York Bridge is kind of a complimentary service, normally returns to all of our bridges and provides a, a complimentary service and tightens those bolts. Yep. And then um, because you're getting the York Timber Protective Systems put on your bridge, and we talked so much about exposure to UV rays and exposure to moisture, you do want to make sure you're touching up your coatings from time to time um, to make sure that, uh, that none of the elements are coming through. We use here at York Bridge uh, high-grade commercial sealants and acrylics, and they do last a long, long time. There are times you may need to do a little touch-up in between actually having to recoat the entire bridge. Yeah, so those are pretty basic things. Um, and I, I think uh, hopefully our audience is pleasantly surprised um, with the requirements of owning a timber bridge. Yes, it's really not that difficult. We provide for these this maintenance for our bridges, but again, it doesn't have to be by us. There are local companies that can do it. It's very simple and easy to maintain a timber bridge. And Julie's part of it. If you maintain it, you can maximize the life of that bridge 75 years or more. And we just have two really great examples of uh, York timber bridges that have been in service for a really, really, really long time. And uh, they keep coming back to us uh, every few years and requesting uh, inspection. And, um, and we really take care of these bridges. The first one is Laughlin Ranch. This is out in Bullhead City, uh, Arizona, which is actually about an hour drive to Las Vegas, Nevada. You know, it's, it's interesting. People saying, oh, no way. You're ever going to build a timber bridge in the desert. Aren't you from Florida? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we build yeah. bridges all over the country, and we have a lot of bridges out west. And what a perfect example, Julie. What a great case study you've chosen with this bridge originally built in 2004. Actually, it was two of them, two vehicular bridges and actually the adjacent golf course. We built those bridges as well. Yes, indeed. And you can see the pictures of the bridge, the first bridge when it was initially built in 2004, all dug fur. Uh, by the way, Laughlin Ranch is a huge master plan community in Arizona. And this is the desert. This yes. is the desert. But I want yeah. you to see these next pictures coming up. 2017. We went back after doing inspections. Uh, this is a bridge that we ourselves have done regular inspections and maintenance of. And this was after we had gone back and done some maintenance on the bridge. Yes, yeah, so we have post caps and coatings. And, um, and then we went back in 2020 to do another inspection. 
and some uh, minor maintenance and look at the deck, look at uh, all of the, the covering and the elements all looking good as new. You know, look, it does look brand new again, does it not, Julie? And what's interesting, this is the desert, Julie. It gets 120 degrees out there. Yes, I believe it was 120 degrees when this picture was taken, according to the <laughs> photographer. <laughs> and you know what? They get less than six inches of rain for the year oh, out that's... there in the desert. We get that in a day here in the summer in Florida. But it just goes to show again that York Bridge, having built bridges all over the country in all these environments, we know the right design. We know the right materials to utilize. We know how to build these bridges correctly. And then by maintaining it, inspecting and maintaining it, they're going to last. And then our final uh, bridge example of maximizing a lifespan of a timber bridge, of course, is one that you're very familiar with. This is, at, uh, this is in the Atlanta area. This is Smyrna, Georgia, in the Woodbridge Crossing residential community. One of my favorite bridges, Julie. Absolutely. Have you ever been to Smyrna, Georgia, Julie? Well, maybe a few times. I actually <laughs> used to live there. <laughs> I knew that. What a beautiful bridge. Now, this bridge is, what, 15, 16 years old, uh, originally built about 2007. It's a residential community, and this is a two-lane vehicular roadway bridge. You can see it's a beautiful design. It's a covered timber bridge. And this is another case where we have gone back and done inspections as well as maintenance of the bridge ourselves. But actually, this is now Southern Yellow Pine that we've built this one out of. That's correct. Laughlin Ranch, we saw a moment ago, was built out of Doug Fir. Now we're back to the east, pressure-treated Southern Yellow Pine. Okay. And then we went back. 2016, that's what I wanted to look at. And you see all the, all the homes have been built and uh, they, they very much care for this bridge. Uh, they call us um, every few years. We go out there, we inspect, we take care of the bridge for them. You can see we've added the coatings and the post caps and uh, coated the substructure uh, of the bridge. You know, this, this is an interesting story. This is all part of the Concord Covered Bridge section of town. And they love the, the covered timber bridge. And there's just right down the stream, the Nickajack Nick Creek that we're crossing over. There's another covered timber bridge on a roadway that was built in 1865, still in use today, almost as old as you are, Julie. Oh, thank you very much, Titus. <laughs> <laughs> 2020, yeah. look at the bridge. Looks beautiful, brand new. As you can see, it, this is how you maximize the life of a timber bridge. It's been inspected. It's had the maintenance done. The, the coatings have been kept on it. What a gorgeous bridge, and it's going to last for a long, long time. Yeah, so what we want to leave you leave with you guys is that we are the industry leader in research and innovation for Timber Bridge longevity. Um, our owner, James York, is 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 lifelong dedicated to this process, and he does not want to give you a timber bridge that's going to have to get torn out in 25 years because it was poorly put together and wasn't maintained and it wasn't coded properly. Um, he wants to put legacy timber bridges in the ground. And legacy means in 75 years, um, your children's children's children are going to go look at that bridge and walk down it and enjoy it and drive across it. You know, Julie, York Bridge is special in many ways, but there are other companies that'll build you a cheap timber bridge. York Bridge is all about finding ways, constantly innovating to improve, to build you a better timber bridge. And the bridges that we design and build are the finest in the timber industry, and therefore they will last, and they will not be a maintenance problem for you. And then in the end, you have this beautiful aesthetic that you'll be very, very proud to have in your development. Well, I could have said it better myself, Titus. So <laughs> I think I'm going to end it there. And thank you so very much for joining me today Good uh, to be in with our you discussion. Again. Been great. Yep. 
Uh, we're about to get to questions. Looks like we have a few of them, um, which is great. I'm excited. Uh, just before we move into questions, um, if you, this presentation is not accredited. However, if you do want a certificate of completion for your files, you are welcome to email me at jledbetter at ybc.com and I will provide that for you for your files. So let's go ahead and get to the Q and A's. All, All right. right, it looks like probably some of these got answered during the presentation, but we'll go ahead and answer them again. Looks like Jeffrey Cook is saying, how often should a bridge be inspected? About every, uh, a private bridge on a private roadway where most of our vehicular bridges are, or pedestrian bridge, about every four years would be about right. But I will say, Titus, if you look at it, if we do provide you with um, with a warranty, you do need to look at the information there um, to make sure you're doing it as often as it should be, according to our our timber uh, our York Bridge um, warranty. Yes. And it's, he also is saying, what's the best way to repair a damaged bridge? Our bridge has been struck struck a couple of times. Well, that's where an inspection will tell you what needs to be done. So basically you need to have the bridge inspected. If it's a timber bridge, the good thing is that the pieces the, the, of wood can easily be unbolted and replaced. Normally it's in the guardrail or the curbing where the damage has probably taken place. And those parts can easily be replaced without affecting the rest of the bridge. But you need an inspection to know exactly what needs to be done. Okay, we have uh, someone who has a, a couple of questions. <laughs> so let me go ahead and uh, uh, get to him. I, I don't want to get your name wrong. It's it's H Y. As if that's high, um, I'm going to go ahead and call you high. I apologize if I've got that wrong. Um, he he's asking, uh, do our bridges meet H S twenty traffic loads for public? residential streets. I'm going to get through all the questions, Titus, and then you can answer. So um, do they meet HS20? Do they meet NCDOT and local muni municipalities? Our projects are Mecklenburg County, which I believe is Charlotte, and uh, costs, of course, per linear foot of span. Uh, benefits and disadvantages compared to other materials. <laughs> That's a well, lot. He's, I he's think. getting all of his questions. <laughs> all the questions. I, I may forget some of them, Julie. She may have to prompt me again. Um, HS20. Yes. HS20 yes. is our standard bridge mm -hmm. designed for our vehicular bridges, though we also build HS25s, HL93s, specially heavy-duty off-road bridges, 73 ton. We can design and build a bridge to any capacity. Now, mm -hmm. regarding North Carolina DOT, uh, North Carolina DOT does not normally accept timber bridges into their bridge system for public roads, but we built many, many vehicular bridges in North Carolina on private roads where they were privately owned and maintained. What was his and, other question? And of course, the, the cost per linear foot is, uh, is gonna be highly dependent on the specifics of a project. So yeah, there, there's, there's so many, there's really no way to give that out. It's not like steel and concrete where they're prefabbing, they can give you a square foot number. Uh, it varies so many different ways. It could range for a vehicular bridge now, a, a two-lane vehicular bridge. It could range anywhere from $150 a square foot up to maybe over $300 or $400 a square foot, depending upon the design and height and many other factors that go into it. But I tell you what, anytime you've got a scope, you can send it over, and just in a few minutes, a bridge consultant here at York Bridge will give you just a quick assessment and a very quick preliminary ballpark price. Yes, um, and, and yes, if you, hi, if you have any, I see you have a couple other questions, but I do want to move on to um, some, other, uh, some other questions. You are welcome to email me if you have more questions, and I will pass them along to Titus. Um, I want to get to Jeremiah Shaw. He actually asked a couple of questions here. Um, hi, Jeremiah. Says, hi, Jeremiah. What are your views on environmental sustainability of sourcing ePay wood? Well, you know, that, that's a good question. Um, it is a natural hardwood that does come from South America. But Julie, I understand that uh, down in Brazil and those other countries, it's a very common wood. Yes, it, it is. It's commonly grown there. Um, I think that may be a misconception that it's it's very rare. It's not. Um, there is legal sourcing in Brazil, 
um, for ePay. Uh, our vendor is has an F, uh, FSC certification on their ePay Wood. Uh, so we do keep those environmental concerns uh, top of mind when we are sourcing our ePay. Yes, and, and all of this is harvested legally and uh, approved by these countries where it's coming from. Uh, so I think it's, it's something that we don't pers personally have an issue with being able to use ePay. And, and we are actually very environmentally uh, friendly with our building. And we do keep these, uh, our owner is very conscious about these kind of things. So he would not in any way, shape or form want to use a wood that he thought was um, causing excess of uh, environmental harm. There are other natural hardwoods, not in the United States, but in South America that are a little bit more readily available. Uh, but there's always composite. If people have any concerns at all about ePay, that's not an issue to us. Composite decking and materials in the handrails work very, very well as well. And that's what I would recommend if anybody had that other concern. Um, Jeffrey Cook had a specific question about um, he wanted to know more information specifically about covered bridge trails. Jeffrey, if you could um, email me at jledbetter at ybc.com with that question. Um, I don't want to get into too many specifics. Uh, we don't have them in front of us. Um, but if you have very specific questions about that project, we'd be glad to answer those for you offline. And then it looks like Jeremiah Shaw is asking another question using, I see you're using sawn lumber on all your structures. Uh, why are you not using glue lamb to increase span lengths and reduce pile and piers? Actually, Jeremiah, I'll let Titus answer this one because he actually did a webinar on spanning solutions. Well, we utilize dimensional saw and lumber for short spans, but we utilize glue laminated beams when we go to longer spans, normally over 26 feet. And that's done to be able to carry the loading of the bridge with single spans of that length. So we do use a lot of glue laminated beams. They work very, very well. They last very, very well. Uh, like st like uh, our sawn dimensional lumber does. It just depends upon the, the design of the bridge, but we utilize both. Yeah, we may not have been featuring as many free span and multiple span projects in this webinar, um, but yes, we, do, we can span all the way up to 100 feet with uh, glue lamps. Is that right, Titus? That's correct. Now, they didn't see the side of the Woodbridge Crossing covered bridge we showed there at the last. But if you looked at the side profile, that is a 75 foot long free span bridge and it uses glue laminated beams for the stringers. Okay, yep. And Leo Lapierre, he says, is it necessary to coat with acrylic covering under the bridge? Not really, it's the UV rays that you're trying to prevent against that does the most damage to the wood. And so normally the acrylic is not done underneath the bridge. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting, Julie, I've been under many of our bridges over the years that have been there for 15, 20 years or longer, and you can go underneath these bridges and they just look brand new. The wood looks like it's brand new underneath these bridges. So it's really more about the top of the bridge where the UV rays are hitting that is the most important for the acrylic. Um, okay, it looks like Robert Hertz. Hertz. Hopefully I'm saying his name right. I apologize, Robert, if I'm not. It says, uh, I think we answered the question, but I'm going to ask it again in case there's some follow up here. Um, how often does York recommend inspections and any recommendations as to what company to hire for the inspection? Well, again, in that three to four year range is about normal for us. We do inspections. We're certainly willing to inspect our own timber bridges and other timber bridges. Uh, though local structural engineers, wherever you're from, can also provide for inspection of bridges. Then he also says, and was a structural load rating analysis performed post-construction? Well, if he means load testing, no, we do not load test our bridges once they are built, but we do certify our bridges. Uh, our engineer of record will seal the drawings and we'll provide a copy of the red lined as built drawings for the, all your records. Uh, so yes, the bridges are signed off and sealed that they were built according to the 
design and that they will handle the loading per the design. So we certify all of that, but as far as load testing, we do not. Um, Robert has a few more follow-up questions. Um, he did mention something about the York uh, deck. Um, Robert, I do want to save that one for, uh, for email. Um, if you could email me at jledbetter at ybc.com. Um, if you have specific questions about your, your York bridge, um, please send them to me. Yes, if you have a bridge that has an HS2044 design, um, you should post your max loader vehicle type on your bridge. Um, that is important. Um, Lester Salinas says, what's the difference in lifespan between composite deck and EPay wood? Well, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good question, Lester. Uh, the composite that we use carries a limited lifetime warranty on the composite. I think the EPay normally carries about a 25 year warranty on the materials itself. As far as how long each of them will last, uh, both of them are probably pretty close in the same range as far as durability and uh, usage. So I'd say you're pretty close to the same with both of those. Yes. Okay. Um, and just Titus as a fun note, uh, John Linton, I'm assuming he's from Indiana as well. Uh -oh. He was excited to hear you saying washing instead of washing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, my mother would love that too, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. And, and, my, and my dad and my kinfolk from uh, Louisville, Kentucky as well. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, if that's it, I think I've answered everyone's question. Please alert me in the chat. I'll give you a couple, a couple of more seconds to do that if you have any more questions. If I miss something, please uh, email me, jledbetter at ybc.com. I, um, I will be glad to answer your question, send it along to Titus and get you squared away on that. So if that's it, I wanna wish you um, a happy, happy Wednesday and I'll see you next year.